Good morning again. I've never been called la creme de la creme. <laughs> I have to think about it and see how does it fit. <laughs> it was uh, 1993, and uh, the results of the Earth Summit were buzzing in my mind. Actually, in the minds of many, and I'm sure several uh, people in this room participated in the Earth Summit, the Rio Summit. But what, what, was, what is important is that all of us believed that we could build a different world. And we believed in that because we had come out with this very strong message about sustainability. I was sure of one thing, that sustainability was a utopia. It sounded beautiful, the scenarios that we built during the process about a sustainable world were absolutely wonderful. But the closer you got to it, the further away it went. So, we had to start with that knowledge. It was a goal, but it will always be distant, and every time in a different way. However, I had a vision. I had a vision that filled me with lots of energy. I had a name, and the name was Futuro Latinoamericano. I had a goal. The goal was to understand conflict and to discover why is it that Latin Americans are so good at creating conflict and so bad in addressing it. And I wanted to prove that conflict and sustainability did not go together. To illustrate the birth of uh, Futuro Latinoamericano, I'll start by telling you a story. Twenty years ago, I was different. I, I thought I was a superwoman. I had the conviction in that, that I could change the world, and I was ignorant enough, and I consider that a blessing today, ignorant enough to find or believe that nothing was impossible. I decided to start working on security, on people's security. And I chose a topic that was burning in all of our hands and minds and hearts, the war between Ecuador and Peru. A war that was there for more than 50 years, that was destructive, that made us spend lots of our financial resources in armament instead of social development. It was a, a war that was hitting our present, that had hit our past, and that was going to affect our future. It affected policies and politics. It affected social dynamics. It affected uh, individuals, segments of societies, and institutions. It affected the young, the young Ecuadorians and the young Peruvians. It affected mothers. It affected me. And the challenge was very clear. It was to provoke change, deep change, not cosmetics. It, the, the challenge was to identify the right leaders, those who believed and shared my belief that we could make a difference. The challenge was to mobilize youth, to transform conflict into a different type of energy, 
to integrate efforts between governments, local and national, the private sector, the military, the young, the media, academia. The challenge was to change behaviors and to rescue social values. And Futuro Latino Americano led a process of dialogue, of conflict transformation that led to the signing, the signing of peace between Ecuador and Peru in 1999. My first dream had been accomplished. And then I decided to work on other types of security, of human security, and that was related to climate change. Climate change focusing on the security related to water, to food, to energy, and to health. 40% of the glaciers of the Andes had disappeared. The rivers were no longer carrying large amounts of water. Fossil fuels continued to be the main focus of investment and development. And the potential of renewable energy was not being considered. Even today, only 5% of that potential is used in Latin America. And then I found data that made me even believe more strongly in the need to address security. Indigenous peoples in the Amazon forest were dying of pneumonia. That was a sign. That, that and the others I have mentioned were all signaling, signaling to us as civil society as well as governments that Climate change was absolutely essential for the future of Latin America and that we were not addressing it. But we were not addressing it because we didn't understand the thing. Even today, I have no idea what it is and how do I interpret a million tons of carbon. Do you? I bet you don't. I bet that you and I have no idea what does it mean to reduce carbon emissions. Can I see it? Can I touch it? Can I understand it? Can my mother understand it? Of course not. So why should we act if this mystifying language is up in the air telling us that we are at risk, that climate change is a threat, and that we don't know how to react to it? And it is a matter of security. Water, food, energy, and health, and many others. But those four are maybe at the top of the list. We, in Fundación Futuro Latinoamericano, wanted and want today to give climate change a human face. We want to build a sense of urgency, by delivering a different sort of message, a message with common language, a message that can reach all sectors of society and that can become part of a dialogue between all the nations of Latin America. But we also wanted to build in the individuals, in the Latin Americans, a sense of, of ownership of the problem and the solution. A sense that we were all sharing a burden that was common to the planet. A sense that we had to think about alternative renewable energy instead of continuing with the pattern of the extractive industry and fossil fuels. A sense that we had to do something about the glaciers that had been part of our early lives and were not there anymore. A sense that production and consumption is directly related to climate change and to the deterioration of our resources. I'm glad 
the federal councillor mentioned food waste. I, myself, Yolanda, believes that food waste today is one of the essential uh, problems of this planet that we need to address. A third of waste not being wasted would feed 800 million hungry people. 800 million a day. And we can act, we can solve, we can propose and we can be part of the solutions. The droughts in uh, Brazil, the floods in Bolivia, the growing threats in every one of the coastal cities like Cartagena, those are the problems that Futuro Latino Americano is working on today. But not one of these achievements or successes or goals can be addressed if the institutions are not strong enough. And Futuro Latino Americano invests in the institution, invests not only in refining the programmatic um, agenda, it invests in each one of its individuals in rescuing the potential of each one of the members of the institution so that we can do it together for the long term. But long term doesn't mean remaining in the institution for ages. I withdrew on my 10th year. And I find that that is something I can share with all of those who are running institutions. Don't stay too long. The ones who follow us are much better. But be there in case you are needed to step in only for minutes or hours, but leave the, the new faces to build an imprint of their personalities, of their dreams, of their hopes into that institution. Latin America is permanently the object of earthquakes, volcanoes, populist governments. All of, that, all of those have a time, a moment, and an impact. But Latin America is also the cradle of chocolate. What would Switzerland do without it? Thank you.